Right, well here we are in Manchester at the Bridgewater Hall. We've come for Stu and Stevenson MEP's meeting about wind power and he's also going to be launching his book uh, The Rape of Britain, Wind Farms and the Destruction of Our Environment which is number five in the Brett Wilder Policy Paper series. Uh, I think the meeting's about to start. Let's go in and see what he's got to say. Thank you very much. Let me start with a small uh, advertising break. The Rape of Britain, a policy paper on wind farms and the construction of our environment. Uh, a snippet of 499 from Brett Wilder Books just outside. This is based on a, a speech I made in the summer in Scotland entitled The, the Rape of Britain. Believe it or not, there was an early day motion that I put down in the Scottish Parliament by a, a new SNP member of the Scottish Parliament, Sandra White, condemning me for using the word rape, which was an insult to women who had been sexually assaulted. I was phoned up by a journalist about this and I said, does Sandra White not know that Homer uh, wrote The Rape of Troy several thousand years ago. <laughs> or is, is she going to accuse me of being homophobic if I say But the, the Oxford Dictionary, and I went to the trouble of saying this at the start of my speech, the Oxford Dictionary describes rape as meaning despoiling, abuse, or violation. And that's exactly what I think this crazy, mad rush for renewables and particularly for onshore and offshore wind turbines is achieving. It's despoiling our countryside, but there's no question of that at all, particularly uh, the ones that I have to live with up in Scotland. It is abusing the people who have to uh, live near these turbines through the flicker effect, noise, uh, vibration. And it's a violation of our sense of fairness because, as I shall demonstrate, it is the biggest transfer of money from the poor to the rich that has happened in this country for centuries. There are now 3,500 operational wind turbines across the UK. There are further 1,200 under construction. 2,000 more have already got planning approval. And another 3,500 are in the planning pipeline. Now, the installed cost of the three and a half thousand that are already operating is seven billion pounds. And yet their output is about equivalent to um, a smaller, medium-sized gas or coal-fired power station for seven billion pounds. The problem is, even if all these 10,200 turbines that are built already or in the planning process are operational. To achieve the government's target of 20% by 2020 in uh, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and in Scotland, a ludicrous 100% by 2020, you're going to need 60,000 turbines. The country is going to be bristling with these monstrous 150 meter high uh, turbines that are now being built. And why, you, you might ask, we heard from Matthew, why are people uh, so keen to get involved in building these turbines? Well, for the, the ROCs, the Renewable Obligation Certificates, the vastly uh, generous feed-in tariffs, the community bribes that the energy companies give to all the uh, community councils and, and local uh, towns and villages who have to suffer these uh, monstrosities. Uh, and the, the poor old farmers and landowners who get these modern day snake oil salesmen coming around their doors and fall for it. And I can't blame some of the farmers who do. They've had a tough time. Suddenly they have a guy on their door uh, dangling a contract that promises them for a mere £50,000 investment they will be uh, reaping a windfall for many years to come. Well, there's a salutary tale here. There's a company in Scotland called Proven Energy who managed to sell uh, six, uh, 600 of, of these uh, giant wind turbines to a variety of farmers in Scotland. 
A month ago, they were told that the blades were subject to catastrophic failure, and they had to uh, tell all of their clients, most of whom still had their turbines under guarantee, that uh, they must immediately switch off their turbines or they could uh, lead to death or injury. And they then uh, called in the administrators and said that they couldn't contemplate uh, facing the uh, losses that were now uh, about to accumulate on them. So, you know, over 600 farmers in Scotland are now left with rusting bits of metal which have disfigured their farms and disfigured the Scottish landscape. They are out of pocket to the tune of 50,000 quid and they're not getting one penny in feed-in tariffs. All of their uh, ruined turbines are standing idle. That's, I think, a salutary warning to any other farmers that might be tempted to uh, go down this path. But, you know, it's not surprising that the wealthiest landowners in Scotland are now racing to uh, get a, a bite at this uh, rather rich cake. That's why we see the Earl of Glasgow, the Duke of Roxburgh, the Duke of Beaufort, Lord Inchcape, uh, the Earl of Seafield, the Earl of Murray, all with vast estates in Scotland, all uh, now in the planning process are actually uh, already having functioning turbines on their estates in Scotland. And of course, Crown Estates, who own the, the seabed around our coast and are one of the wealthiest uh, landowners in the country as a result, they are going to be coining it in with all these offshore uh, wind farms that are about to be built. But despite the thousand <coughs> plus turbines that are already bristling across Scotland, uh, the output from our entire renewables industry last year fell, according to the government's own figures, by 30%. Because, lo and behold, uh, there wasn't enough rain to fill the reservoirs for the hydropower uh, projects, and there wasn't enough wind to make the wind turbines operate uh, in a functional way. For the most recent figures, according to the National Grid, uh, the load factor for all the operational turbines in Scotland between November 2009 and December 2010 was 22%. Now, the energy companies tell you that they function at 30% plus. In fact, it was 22%. And last December, when the country was shivering uh, in minus 14 degrees, and we had about a meter of snow, uh, and electricity uh, utilization was surging, there wasn't a single wind turbine in Scotland turning, and they were providing no energy whatsoever. This is the ludicrous uh, truth about these wind turbines. They do not do what's written on the can. They are vastly overpriced, far too expensive. They destroy the landscape. They don't cut CO2 emissions. In fact, Germany, which has more wind turbines than any other country in Europe, uh, apparently 20,000 installed turbines at the present time, they have not cut CO2 emissions by a single gram in Germany because they have to build base load backup to cover for the wind turbines and that nowadays when they've stopped uh, they've, they've fallen uh, out with the whole concept of nuclear that means building coal and gas fired power stations high co2 emitters so they are not reducing co2 in any shape or form but in the meantime they're driving up people's electricity bills now, according to the Department of Energy, uh, the process of building uh, renewable energy in, in uh, the UK is going to add £500 to people's uh, electricity and, and gas bills over the next four years, driving 20% of all UK citizens, that's 5.5 million of our citizens, into fuel poverty. That's people being uh, made to take the choice of paying for fuel or food. Now that is the renewable policy that we are pursuing to now as we shovel money into the pockets of the fat cat energy companies and the rich uh, estate and, and landowners. Uh, we are forcing people into fuel poverty in that process. So, 
In Scotland, where we are seeing uh, many of these wind farms being built on deep peatland, the peat, which has been a natural uh, carbon capture and storage system, storing, incidentally, three times more carbon than your average rainforest, the peat has been dug up to build wind farms, to put in 1,000 tonne <coughs> concrete foundations for each individual uh, turbine, to put so-called floating roads, which are supposed to defy gravity somehow, but need thousands of tons of, of ballast as a foundation, which put pressure on the peat bog, cutting the flow of water, and drying the entire bog downstream of the so-called floating road, building quarries and borrow pits, pylons and overhead lines, and in the process, destroying the peat and releasing several thousand years worth of stored CO2. Even the Forestry Commission admitted in the small print of their annual report this year that they have cut down uh, 25 million trees in the last decade to make way for wind farms. I mean, where is the logic in cutting down trees, another natural carbon capture and storage system, and digging up peat to build wind turbines. The whole thing is a complete madness. And we know from uh, the figures, for instance, gas just now is reckoned to uh, cost £57 per megawatt hour. Onshore wind, £72 per megawatt hour. Offshore wind, which in Scotland, the SNP government say is the, the big, uh, that's where the future lies, is a humongous £182 per megawatt hour. Uh, solar, £244 per megawatt hour, it's out the park. Uh, whereas new nuclear <coughs> power uh, is £69 per megawatt hour, even after factoring in the safe disposal of nuclear, nuclear waste and the uh, safe uh, dismantling of the nuclear power station at the end of its functioning life. So at £69, compare that to offshore wind at £182 and you see the, the difference. And these modern nuclear plants are producing uh, CO2 free energy 24-7. That is uh, where we have to go. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many things we could do. I'm sure we could save uh, with better energy efficiency about 70% of the energy that we currently use. It's ridiculous we still allow uh, homes to be built with single glazed windows in this country. But there are no planning uh, laws in certain parts of the country that insist on double or as in Scandinavia, triple glazing. There are many uh, ways that we could be investing in the future of, say, the hydrogen economy, which in Germany they're now looking at very carefully. They have hydrogen trains, hydrogen trams, hydrogen boats. <coughs> we are not doing any of these things because we have it in our heads that wind turbines and renewable energy is the answer to the future. Well, if you want to uh, go and see Loch Ness in Scotland, before 150 wind turbines are built around the shores, I would go very soon because we are about to destroy our unique selling point in Scotland uh, with these mad turbines. Thank you.